Beginning our countdown at number 10 is Lisa Kudrow. Most people will know her for her legendary performance as Phoebe Buffay on Friends, but before that, she auditioned for the role of Roz Doyle on Frasier. The character Roz was Frasier's producer and friend who had a strong-willed personality. One thing we love about Lisa is her quirkiness, but it did not fit well with what the director had in mind for that role. However, they didn't know this until they actually hired her and started doing read-throughs with the other cast members. The production team felt something was off and ended up rewriting the lines that were meant to be serious into something hilarious, and it was just a totally different direction than what they wanted. So they decided to fire Lisa and replace her with someone new, someone way less quirky. Like imagine being fired for just having like this really fun personality. Moving over to number nine, we got Ryan Gosling. It's hard to believe that a Hollywood heartthrob like him would get dismissed from a movie set. But it didn't happen because of some big argument went down or anything, it just had to do with his weight. <laughs> The actor is often praised for his chiseled jawline and ripped abs, but he decided to change his look for the movie and it backfired on him. When he was first hired to play a key role in The Lovely Bones, he weighed around 150 pounds. But he thought that since he was taking on a dad role, he should gain some weight. He gained 60 pounds and started to grow at his beard as well. But when he got to set to start filming, the director, Peter Jackson, had a different vision for the part, so he ended up firing him and replaced him with Mark Wahlberg. I personally don't understand how this happened. Like, wouldn't the actor and director communicate about the vision they had for the character? I don't really understand it. However, I guess Ryan gained weight and grew his beard for nothing. I would be pretty pissed if I gained 60 pounds and just lose a job. Swiping the number eight spot is Rebel Wilson. The Pitch Perfect actress took legal action after she was fired from a major role in Kung Fu Panda 3 and a role in the movie Trolls. An Australian magazine published articles about her that she said was defamation and caused her to lose the roles. Apparently the producers told her that she had become divisive and DreamWorks deemed her unsuitable for animated films that are aimed for a child audience. It is common that a studio will look at the performer's public image because ultimately it can be a reflection on on theirs. During the time of the legal case, DreamWorks didn't have any comments on it. And good news is, Rebel has been able to hold down a pretty solid acting career without those jobs. At number five, James Charles and Tati Westbrook. James and Tati's falling out is probably one of the best examples of a toxic friendship. This whole bi sister scandal from 2019 saw their entire relationship torn apart in the matter of one video. James and Tati famously had a relationship dating all the way back to the beginning of James's career, but Tati Tati suddenly decided to cut ties with him after he posted at Coachella endorsing Sugar Bear Hair, the competitor to Tati's vitamin company. She then proceeded to expose him for his endorsement, and she could have stopped there, but she decided to also expose him for his alleged misconduct with other people as well. She claimed that James was trying to quote, manipulate someone's sexuality, and she referenced a specific incident that went down in 2019 at her birthday party. Though James thought of Tati as some kind of parental figure, she still decided to publicly cut ties with James, thus beginning the whole drama get in fiasco. Their falling out and subsequent drama roped so many other people into the mess as well, and a lot of people lost friends and followers. It was incredibly messy and overly toxic. At number four, Little Mix. On October 8th of this year, former Little Mix member Jesse Nelson released her music video for her song Boys featuring Nicki Minaj, and this ended up causing a lot of drama. After the video dropped, backlash ensued as viewers immediately started speculating on whether or not Jesse was deliberately trying to portray herself as a black women for content, and people started calling her out for blackfishing. In the boys video, fans pointed out that Jessie was using a lot of black centric aesthetics, most notably a darker tan, but with this blackfishing controversy came more drama as people started looking into Jessie's past with Little Mix. Soon one of the girl group's members came forward to say that she had actually warned Jessie about blackfishing and how it's wrong, but Jessie still did it anyway, and she even went so far as to claim that no one had ever commented on it until this video came out. This caused people to take a deeper look into Jessie falling out with the group and the toxic friendships that they had. The downfall of Little Mix became a hot topic for a while with people taking sides, but the bottom line is that all of this ended badly for everyone and no one came out on top. At number three, Heidi Montag and Lauren Conrad. Heidi and Lauren were the it girls of reality TV back in the early 2000s when they starred in the hit show The Hills. But in 2007, their friendship ended when Heidi Montag and her boyfriend Spencer spread a rumor that Lauren made an explicit tape with her boyfriend Jason. After the rumor started 
were spreading through entertainment news like wildfire, Lauren decided to come forward about everything and commented on her website writing quote, We did not make a tape. Jason and I are both shocked and hurt that people would say such horrible things about us. I can't believe that somebody would go to such great lengths to try and damage my reputation. End quote. This situation got even worse when Lauren still had to shoot season 3 of The Hills and that season is where the fight came to a head and there was an epic fight on camera between the reality TV stars. This fight was so bad that it still triggers some people, showing that this falling out was as bad as they come. At number 2, Zayn Malik and Perry Edwards. Yes, Zayn and Perry were in a relationship but they were friends too, at least until the toxicity came in and ruined everything. The couple had started dating in 2012 and were engaged in 2013. But things soon turned sour after, and there's been a lot of hate in the mix there too. At first, when news of their split broke, there was little to no information about it other than reports that Zayn had asked Perry to move out of the house that they had shared together. And neither one of them were really talking about what happened between them, but things got heated when Zayn retweeted a tweet that said, Retweet for Fifth Harmony's Worth It or Favorite for Little Mix's Black Magic. Instead of vote for his ex-girlfriend's music group, he voted for her competition, and fans immediately started the hashtag Zayn has no chill. Soon Soon enough, Perry bounced back from the breakup and said things in her song, Shout Out to My Ex, about Zayn. The end of their relationship was messy to say the least and a lot of people got roped into the drama which just fueled the negativity surrounding the whole situation. And finally, at number 1, Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. Before Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber were a couple, they were pretty close friends. But now they're at odds after their toxic relationship went up in flames. They started dating in 2011 when they were still teenagers and from that point they had a rocky time together. They were on and off again for a while before finally ending things for good in 2018 when Haley Baldwin came along. People were already aware of how toxic Selena and Justin's relationship was simply because of how many times they had public breakups and makeups, but in early 2020, Selena came forward to talk more in depth about their relationship and how she experienced mistreatment. Selena said that she was quote, a victim of certain things, saying that what she felt was emotional mistreatment from Justin. She also went on to say that it took her a long time to find strength in her experiences and to shake her quote, Victim mentality. End quote. Justin never released a statement in response, but in late 2019, he did open up about his actions in past relationships, saying that he became, quote, resentful, disrespectful to women, and angry. It's heartbreaking to hear just how bad things were between them, and the fact that they aren't together is probably for the best. Halfway number five, Gwyneth Paltrow. These two were once really good friends, so close they even lived together at one point, but everything ended once their careers got involved. Apparently both the ladies auditioned for the lead role in Shakespeare in Love, but Paltrow ended up snagging the role and then even went on to win Best Actress at the Oscars. It was even rumored that Paltrow only got the role because she stole the script from Winona when she saw it on their coffee table. Paltrow piled on the hate even more after Winona got in some trouble with the law for shoplifting. Paltrow wrote in a blog at that time, quote, Back in the day I had a friend of me who was pretty hell bent on taking me down. I restrained myself from fighting back. I tried to take the high road. But one day I heard that something unfortunate and humiliating happened to this person and my reaction was deep relief and happiness. So clearly their relationship is still as bad as ever. In at number 4, Lauren Conrad. Heidi and Lauren were reality TV royalty back in the early 2000s when they started in the hit show The Hills. Not only were they co-stars, they were also best friends. But in 2007, the friendship ended when Heidi Montang and her boyfriend Spencer Pratt spread a rumor that Conrad made an explicit tape with her boyfriend Jason. After the rumor was spreading like wildfire, Conrad commented on her website denying the rumors of a tape. In season 3 of The Hills, the fight about this topic came to a head, and the women got physical in one of the most epic reality TV fights of all time. It's still a sore spot for the entire cast. In at number 3, James Charles. James and Tati's falling out is probably one of the best examples of someone being exposed by their friend. Tati was an OG in the beauty community when James came up on the platform, and she decided to help him and give him advice when needed. From this, the pair became close friends, and James even did Tati's wedding makeup. Their friendship hit a snag when James did a brand deal for Sugar Bear Hair, a competitor to her brand, Halo. But Tati publicly cut ties when she uploaded an explosive video by sister, accusing James of toxic and illegal behavior. She claims that James was trying to quote, manipulate someone's sexuality. She referenced a specific incident that went down in 2019 at her birthday party. 
At first, everyone was on Tati's side, and James lost a record number of YouTube subscribers. But then he made a clapback video, and those fans then turned on Tati and took his side. As of now, both their careers have suffered tremendously, and they both apologized for attacking each other online. In the number two, Rihanna. Rihanna and Katy Perry used to be the best of friends and were constantly seen out together, but that all changed when men got involved. Apparently, the long friendship ended after Rihanna decided to get back with Chris Brown, who we know treated her horribly. Of course, an incident like that would worry any good friend. After Rihanna went back with him, Perry told Marie Claire, quote, I didn't reach out to her after that incident. But Katie is not the only one that threw some shade. After Katie got flack for dating John Mayer after her divorce, Rihanna commented on that relationship, telling the observer, quote, Katy Perry can date anyone she wants. I could never give relationship advice to anybody. Clearly, the subtext of that is her dating Chris Brown. But that's not all. It seems that Katie might have even tried to mend things when she said Rihanna is one of her dream American Idol judges. But Rihanna savagely responded to this saying, quote, I don't know, depends how bored I am. And finally, at number one, Kylie Jenner. This is another story of a man getting in between friends. Kylie Jenner and Jordan Woods were besties since childhood, and they grew up doing practically everything together. They even lived together as adults, and Jordan starred in Kylie's reality series, Life of Kylie. Their relationship even gave Jordan employment opportunities with the family, including modeling opportunities with Chloe's clothing line. But that all changed after Jordan hooked up with Tristan Thompson, Chloe's baby daddy and boyfriend at the time. The whole thing was an absolute mess, and as a result, Jordan was cut from the family, including a friendship with Kylie. Jordan ended up going on Red Table Talk and claimed that the interaction she had with Tristan was small, but Chloe called her a liar on Twitter and claimed it was much more. She even blamed her for breaking up her family. Since then, Kylie and Jordan's relationship has not recovered, and Kylie now has a new best friend named Stassi. So that is all for the list, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this one below, and let me know if there's any that I missed that could be in a part two. I'm sure there is so many more of these, and it's really so sad when two celebrities are such good friends, tell each other secrets they really think they can trust each other, and then things obviously change and go south, and then you know all these rumors and stuff like that comes out. It is so sad. Being betrayed by a friend is probably one of the worst things ever. Kicking off the countdown number 10 is Ronnie and Sam from Jersey Shore. Rest in peace, the most toxic relationship I've ever witnessed in my entire life so far. If you followed the reality show, then you followed the epic fights that this couple had pretty much every other day. They started dating in the first season back in 2009, and they were on and off for years until 2016. There's honestly too many fights to name. I could literally probably have a top 10 list just with their fights alone. But one fight we will never forget is when Ronnie started taking all of Sam's belongings and tossing them out the door onto the upper deck. He broke her glasses in the process and completely destroyed the majority of her stuff. The craziest part is when he took her bed, like the whole bed, and started to throw it outside and she jumped on top of it and held on like a spider monkey as he was literally trying to throw it out the window. Needless to say, he got the mattress, but he did not get the bed frame, in case you're wondering. Up next, number nine is the feud between Amanda and Jessica on Love is Blind. This show aired this past month in February 2020 and has completely taken the world by storm with its unique concept and drama-packed episodes. If you haven't seen it, it helps singles find their match without seeing each other face to face to create this emotional connection over a physical one. And then they have 30 days to get engaged and plan their wedding. It's honestly really weird and crazy, but but uh, people are loving it, and I did start watching it. But there's been an ongoing feud between two of the girls on the show, and it is all over a man. Shocker. Long story short, a man named Barnett built a close bond with two girls, Jessica and Amber, but he ended up picking Amber, and they ended up getting married. Turns out, Jessica was actively trying to pursue her fiance throughout the whole process, and Amber confronted her, telling her that she would ruin her life and break her nose. Sniper our number eight spot comes from the MTV reality show, The Challenge. Anyone who's followed the series knows that you never want to mess with CT. He is physically enormous and a complete loose cannon when he is angry. Throughout the seasons, he had an ongoing feud with a guy named Adam, and things got heated between them on a few different occasions. But one of their altercations came during the season, The Duel 2, and CT went wildebeest on him and had to be held back by six other grown men who he was able to fight off also. He is intense, you guys, honestly. 
The fight has gone down in reality show history, and people often refer to the brawl as David vs Goliath. Anyone who has heard that Bible lesson before will understand the joke. In spot number seven is the epic feud from the hills between Lauren Conrad and Heidi Montag. Five words to sum it up for you, or to refresh your memory: you know what you did. The drama between these two girls has gone down in history. They started out as best friends, practically becoming sisters as they lived together, and took the lead spots on the reality series. But then Heidi met a guy named Spencer Pratt, and things went sour real quick. You'd have to watch the show to understand the years of turmoil they went through, but at one point, Heidi was allegedly telling people that Lauren made a sex tape and even leaked it to the press. So during this explosive confrontation in public at a very fancy event, Lauren blew up on Heidi and iconically yelled in her face, you know what you did. Because Heidi just kept playing dumb, saying she had no idea why Lauren was mad. That was like the typical move in high school that all girls used. Like you know what you did, but then you just play dumb and you'd be like, I don't, I, what? Why are you upset with me? I have no idea what you're talking about. It's like I know exactly what you're talking about. Moving along to number six is Kenya Moore versus Portia Williams on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Whenever someone whips out a megaphone and yells, you are a dumb hoe, you know that stuff is about to go down. The two ladies had tension between each other in the series which reached a boiling point ending in a physical altercation. There was a lot of hair pulling and smack talk, but the fight actually resulted in Kenya pressing assault charges on Portia. She was issued an arrest warrant for her attack which was all captured on tape so there was really no denying it. She ended up turning herself in and was put behind bars. She was later let go on a $2,000 bond. She was charged with a misdemeanor battery and had to pay a fine along with doing community service hours. Not worth it girlfriend. Not worth being put behind bars. In the number 10 spot is Elon Musk and Johnny Depp. If you miss what's been going on between them, they started feuding after Depp made claims that his ex-wife Amber Heard had an affair with Elon when they were together. Not only that, but he accused him of having a threesome with Amber and Cara Delevingne, which he denied. Actually, they all denied it. Elon gave a statement following his claims and said that he was never with Amber while she was married to Depp and that it is totally false. Depp and Amber are in a really nasty lawsuit right now for domestic violence, and one of the text messages used as evidence had Johnny threatening to cut off Elon's genitals. <laughs> oh wow. Once this news surfaced, Elon responded by challenging Johnny to a cage fight. Of course, the internet is taking this very seriously and is already betting their odds on who would win. So let me know in the comments. Who do you think would win? Are we team Johnny or are we team Elon? Team Johnny, he would just, I feel like he don't mess around. Up next number nine is Harry Jowsey and Francesca Ferrargo. The couple took the world by storm after the new Netflix series Too Hot to Handle blew up. People quickly fell in love with them and started getting invested with them as a couple. But then what seemed like out of nowhere, Francesca posted a six minute YouTube video where she was crying and explaining that Harry had broken up with her and that some of the rumors going around were true. We later found out that they were cheating rumors. Then he posted a YouTube response video saying that it wasn't that and that he simply just fell out of love with her. A few months to follow, nasty rumors kept going around and Francesca posted a written statement to her Instagram story saying she now has her lawyer involved. That's how serious some of these things are getting. I've never, like a breakup involving lawyers? Damn, y'all weren't even together that long. This is crazy. Sliding in number eight is Jillian Michaels and Lizzo. Jillian Michaels is a health and fitness guru who caused some controversy after making comments about Lizzo that came off as body shaming. She was doing an interview on BuzzFeed News AM to DM when she talked about Lizzo's body and said, why are we celebrating her body? Why does it matter? Cause it isn't going to be awesome if she gets diabetes. I'm just being honest. Fans quickly defended Lizzo and slammed Julia for fat shaming. Lizzo took the high road in this one so the feud was really between Julia and Lizzo's fans, but other celebrities actually got involved too and defended Lizzo, like Jamila Jamil and Whoopi Goldberg. Sliding to number seven is Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill. There's been bad blood between Nicki's ex, Meek Mill, and her current husband, Kenneth Petty, for a long time now. But in February 2020, Nicki took things to another level after seeing that Meek liked a meme which made fun of her new husband. She posted an Instagram story where she wrote, You a clown, you do it for likes, hashtag Twitter fingers, beat women, scared of men. Her allegations that he beats women was not taken lightly, and he responded on Twitter. 
Twitter saying, the only way you can try to end my career is to say I beat women, talk about your brother convicted of rape and you knew and paid for his lawyer. Being honest, I think his comment was also too far. He was referring to Nikki's brother who was sentenced to 25 years to life for predatory sexual assault. The whole situation escalated very quickly and their tweets just continued where they made very serious claims against each other involving domestic violence. Y'all stop fighting with your damn exes. They exes, they in the past. Rolling into number six is Ellen DeGeneres versus everyone. Now, I know this sounds silly, you guys, but there's no better way to describe this one. I literally just can't narrow down to one person. For some reason, 2020 is not Ellen's year and the world has turned against her. She was once known for being America's sweetheart, but then she started getting exposed for mistreatment in the workplace and towards other celebrities. It all started when a mean side to her was exposed by Nikki Tutorials and Dakota Johnson, both who were guests on her show. From there, more more celebrities came forward with stories as well as her former employees and even her old bodyguard. Things have gotten so bad the Ellen DeGeneres show is under international investigation by Warner Media. Executives from the show sent out a memo to staff members saying interviews will be conducted about their experiences on set by a Warner Media's employee relations group. Things are getting serious for Ellen. Damn. I thought it was just some gossip, but halfway through at number five comes from the show Flavor of Love, the feud between Pumpkin and New York. There are a lot of reality dating shows nowadays, and this one is similar to like the whole Bachelor concept. Flavor Flav looks for his next love among 20 new single contenders, so you can just imagine how competitive the ladies would get. One of the feuds went down between two girls who go by their names Pumpkin and New York, and it led to one of them getting spat on. The spitting scene went viral online and showed Pumpkin firing like a loogie in New York's face. Like you can literally see her gathering mucus from her insides and like winding up to hork it on her. She spit on her and then booked it. So New York chases after her and pushes her on the head and they crash into some of the cameras. It's crazy, it's chaotic, it's really disgusting in all honesty. She really horks in her face. We've made it to number four and we have Jordan and Christian from The Bachelor in Paradise. This one might be the most ridiculous one on our list because the whole fight was over a pinata. Two grown men fighting over a pinata. Here's the whole story. Both men had feelings for Nicole Lopez Alvar and one night she got back from a date with Christian. So a guy named Clay went to snag some time with her. But Christian wanted to continue the date and refused to give Clay any time with her. So Clay walked away, but then he went and vented to some of his buddies on the show. His buddy Jordan felt that it was important to stick up for his friend. So he crashed Christian and Nicole's hangout by trying to tear down the pinata they had hung. And that is when the two men started fist fighting over this star shaped pinata. It's so ridiculous. In the third spot comes from the MTV show The Real World when Nia fought with Johnny and Avery. The TV show did a season in Portland and not all the strangers in the house were able to get along with each other. During one of the final episodes, fans watched as Nia threatened to beat up Johnny and his girlfriend Avery. She even made a makeshift weapon out of a hair dryer. The feud reached a boiling point and Nia started attacking Johnny which made Avery come to his defense. And from there, the whole thing escalated and the two girls started fist fighting. It went down in history to be called one of the most brutal fights in real world history, with people claiming that it was very hard to watch. I actually follow that show like all the time and I actually watched it live when it was happening. And yeah, it's pretty intense. Taking over number two is Abby Lee Miller from the reality series Dance Moms. It's not the typical show you would expect to see physical altercations to happen on, which is why the world was taken by storm when they did. This one is more serious than the other ones on our list because there were actually children present and an arrest was made. Abby Lee is known for being a strict dance teacher and on the show she often has arguments with some of the other dancers moms. But none of them got as bad as this one which resulted in Abby and a mom named Kelly putting their hands on one another. Abby ended up calling the police on her saying that she attacked her. Kelly ended up filing a countersuit against her including the Dance Moms production company for $5 million. She claimed that her daughters were mistreated on the show and that there had been a breach of contract. So this feud was a physical altercation but then led to a very long and serious lawsuit. Alright guys we have made it to number one and we have the situation versus the wall. If you watch Jersey Shore you know exactly what I am talking about. If you didn't watch the show all you need to really know is that Mike Sorrentino, aka The Situation, often had issues with his other housemates, but one of them in particular named Ronnie. Like Ronnie and Sam that I spoke about in number 10. 
him. One night, things got heated and the two of them got into the biggest physical altercation that fans had ever seen on the show. But the argument ended up involving an extra participant, the wall. At one point in the fight, Mike slams his own head against the concrete wall, knocking himself to the ground. He ended up being carried to the hospital on a stretcher and suffered from a really bad concussion. So he actually had to take a break from the activities on the show while wearing a neck brace the whole time. Coming in at 10, Eminem versus Machine Gun Kelly. In August of 2018, Eminem released his surprise album Kamikaze. And on that album, he decided to take aim at fellow rappers Lil Yachty, Drake, Lil Pump, Tyler the Creator, Joe Budden, Lil Xan, and of course, Machine Gun Kelly. Eminem directed a few rhymes at MGK on the song Not Alike, I quote, But next time you don't gotta use Tech 9 if you wanna come at me with a submachine gun. And I'm not talking to you, but you already know who the F you are. Kelly, I don't use sublimes and sure as F don't sneak diss, but keep commenting on my daughter Haley. Well then, the lyric seemingly stems from a 2012 tweet MGK posted commenting on how attractive he thought Eminem's daughter was. She was just 16 years old at the time. The tweet said, I quote, Okay, so I just saw a picture of Eminem's daughter, and I have to say, she is hot as f in the most respectful way possible because M is king. In response to Eminem's track, MGK released Rap Devil, which was a poke at the Eminem moniker Rap God, a track that held literally no punches. Eminem was quick with a comeback, putting out the track called Kill Shot, with artwork that featured the likeness of MGK. MGK then responded with an Instagram post captioned, He Missed, with the picture showing MGK standing in front of a crowd wearing a Kill Shot shirt, middle finger high. Coming in at nine, Kim Kardashian versus Chloe Grace Moretz. This feud started a few years back in 2016 after Kim infamously released her nude selfie onto Twitter, which of course went viral. Chloe Grace Moretz was not a fan of this, tweeting, There's a huge difference in respecting the platform that you're given as a celebrity and slut shaming, something I never have done and would never do. Kim wasn't a fan of this, responding to her tweet with, I quote, Let's all welcome Chloe Grace Moretz to Twitter since no one knows who she is. Your nylon cover is cute, boo. Oof. The shade. Now, the two don't seem to have made amends since then, and Chloe seems to have no regrets tweeting out to Kim in the first place. She recently stated, I quote, That picture wasn't linked to body confidence. It wasn't hashtag body confidence or hashtag love who you are. It was done in a slightly voyeuristic light, which I felt was a little inappropriate for young women to see. Preach, Chloe. I agree. Coming in at eight, Paris Hilton versus Nicole Richie. Paris and Nicole were childhood best friends who dominated reality TV when they starred together on the popular series The Simple Life back in 2003, which followed the pair as they traveled across the country, rid themselves of money and material items, and lived a very simple life. However, at the height of the show's fame, the two suddenly were at war with one another. Paris Hilton stated, I quote, It's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends. Nicole knows what she did, and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. Now, according to some reports, Nicole was jealous of the attention Paris was receiving, so she threw a party to celebrate Paris's appearance on the sketch show SNL, and followed it with a screening of Paris's notorious 2003 sex tape. Wow. Since then, the two made up and filmed two more seasons of The Simple Life. However, back in 2014, Nicole appeared on Andy Cohen's Watch What Happens Live, stating that the two don't talk much anymore, but she does still consider her to be a friend. Coming in at seven, Elton John versus Madonna. This is one of the most notorious feuds on our list, with this pair being longtime frenemies, with a feud that became more apparent during the 2012 Golden Globe Awards. The two singers were pitted against each other in the Best Original Song category, and prior to the ceremony, Elton John was was interviewed by Carson Daly, asking him who had the best chance of winning. When Madonna's name came up, Elton responded with, she doesn't have a f***ing chance of winning. Madonna responded in kind, stating that those were fighting words, and of course, the queen of pop came out on top and beat out Elton for the grand prize. Good on you, Madge. Coming in at six, Angelica Houston versus Jackie Weaver. This is a fresh feud for all you Hollywood gossip fanatics out there. In May of this year, Angela Houston was on the press tour for John Wick Chapter 3, during which time she made some remarks about her contemporaries and their career choices. One jab in particular seemed to be directed at Jackie Weaver and her choice to do the film Poms. I quote, Quite honestly, I'm looking for movies that impress me in some way, that aren't apologetically humble or humiliating like Band of Cheerleaders gets back together for one last hurrah, you know, an old lady cheerleader movie. Oof, 
shots fired. Weaver's film Poms is of course that exact premise, so she had some choice words for Houston, stating, Well, she can go f herself. However, in a radio interview with Andy Cohen, Houston apologized, well, a little bit, stating, I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings, and if I did, I hope they come back at me. Well, then, Jackie, now's your chance. Coming in at five, Alyssa Milano versus Shannon Doherty. Growing up, WB's Charmed was my absolute favorite show, and Alyssa Milano and Shannon Doherty were two of the three stars on that show. That was up until Doherty was fired and replaced by Rose McGowan. According to sources, Milano and Doherty had a lot of conflicts between the scenes, which resulted in Doherty. Leaving. When Milano appeared on Andy Cohen's show, she stated, I quote, I don't know if she got fired. We never really found out what happened. I can tell you that we were on the air with her for three years and there were definitely some rough days. Since then, it seems the two have somewhat buried the hatchet, with Milano stating, What happens 15 years ago or however long it was, it's irrelevant. Milano also very quickly came to Doherty's side when she was diagnosed with breast cancer back in 2015. Coming in at four, Ariana Grande versus Pete Davidson. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson infamously called off their engagement in October 14th of last year. However, the SNL star was very quick to make jokes at the expense of his ex fiance in early November. During a promo clip for an SNL episode, Pete jokingly proposed to musical guest Maggie Rogers, stating, I quote, Hey Maggie, I'm Pete, you wanna get married? However, she rejects him and Pete states, zero for three. Yikes. After the promo was released, Grande tweeted, I quote, For somebody who claims they hate relevancy, you sure love clinging to it. Oof. I can't deal with the shade. She then tweeted, thank you, next, before deleting the tweets. And then, of course, on November 3rd, Grande released a track inspired by her ex-boyfriends called, thank you, next, with some of the lyrics stating, I quote, even almost got married, and for Pete, I'm so thankful. Wish I could say thank you to Malcolm, because he was an angel. Look what you taught me, and for that I say, thank you, next, I'm so fucking grateful for my ex. That song is a bop. Coming in at three, Taylor Swift versus Kanye West. This is perhaps one of the most epic feuds that we have on our entire list, with this fallout garnering media attention all over the world. Now, this one began all the way back in 2009 at the MTV Music Awards when Kanye West infamously interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech. However, the two publicly made up the following year, with West even discussing doing a new music with Taylor in 2015. I quote, She wants to get in the studio and we're definitely going to go in. I don't have an elitism about music. I don't discriminate. However, their music plans fell through when Kanye released his song Famous in 2016, where he rapped the lyrics, I quote, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that famous. Taylor retaliated by vocaling her dislike of the song at the 2016 American Music Awards, even accusing Kanye of undermining her success. Now, this is where Kim Kardashian joins the feud. She jumped in to defend Kanye by posting several videos of Taylor and Kanye discussing the song and proving that Taylor approved of the track's message from the very beginning. Coming in at two, Betty Davis versus Joan Crawford. Now, a lot of you will be surprised that this didn't make our number one spot, but you'll see why very soon. Betty Davis and Joan Crawford were Hollywood with legends who had a just as legendary feud that started in 1935 when Davis fell in love with actor Franchot Tone on the set of Dangerous. However, the newly divorced Crawford quickly tied Tone down and ended up marrying him first. The feud continued when the two worked together on the iconic 1962 film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, for which Davis was nominated for an Oscar. However, Crawford allegedly campaigned against her and even went on stage to accept the award on behalf of the winning actress Anne Bancroft. Younger viewers will also be familiar with the feud as it was brought to life on screen for the FX show Feud starring Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon. And finally, coming in at number one, Bella Thorne vs Whoopi Goldberg. On June 15th of this year, a hacker threatened to release Bella Thorne's nude photos after they hacked all of her social media. So Bella took matters into her own hands and instead released them herself. I quote, I'm putting this out because it's my decision, now you don't get to take yet another thing from me. Most rallied behind the young star, but not Whoopi Goldberg on The View. The show discussed the situation but Whoopi didn't seem to think Bella's actions were brave and instead shamed her. She said, I quote, Listen, if you're famous, I don't care how old you are. You don't take new pictures of yourself. When they're hacking you, they're hacking all of your stuff. So whether it's one picture or a million pictures, once you take that picture, it goes into the cloud and it's available to any hacker who wants it. And if you don't know that in 2019 that this is an issue, I'm sorry, you don't get to do that. Bella wasn't going to let Whoopi get the final say though and she took to her Instagram stories. First writing 
a long note about how upset she was by Whoopi's stance before announcing she was cancelling her upcoming appearance on The View because she didn't want to get beaten down by older women. She then uploaded a video. Through tears, she stated, I'm not going to lie, I want to say I feel pretty disgusting. I just want to say, watching this interview, you made me feel really bad about myself and I hope you're happy, I really do. I can only imagine all the kids who have their shit released and then they commit suicide. You're so crazy for thinking such terrible things on such an awful situation. Whoopi failed to respond, but others were quick to come to the defense of Bella, and rightly so. At number 10, Amber Heard and Kate James. Amber Heard lost a friend due to her actions towards Johnny Depp and her disregard for others. The actress's former friend and assistant Kate James exposed her for her hurtful actions on multiple occasions. During the libel case between Johnny Depp and The Sun publication, we saw testimonies from several people who were close to the couple, but none came close to that of Amber's ex-assistant Kate James. Kate went on record and said that Johnny was mentally and physically hurt by Amber during the time that she worked with her between 2012 and 2015. She also went on to disclose how the beginning of Amber and Johnny's relationship went, saying that Amber would quote, speak in disparaging terms about him and would say things that she was quote, dating an old man. Kate also went on to expose how Amber would copy Johnny's lifestyle. She commented on the fact that upon beginning their relationship, Amber would start behaving weirdly in comparison to her true personality. She also went on to say that Amber quote, went through an odd change that almost morphed her into a version of death. Kate really exposed Amber for who she was behind the scenes, being that they spent so much time together. She did not hold back, especially after being betrayed by her when Amber retold a traumatic story from Kate's life and pawned it off as if it was her own. This friendship was super toxic and ended badly. At number 9, Gwyneth Paltrow and Winona Ryder. Gwen and Winona were once really good friends, and they were seen out tons of times and even lived together at one point. They were two peas in a pod, but everything ended because of their competitiveness when it came to a Hollywood role. Apparently, both of the ladies auditioned for the lead role in Shakespeare in Love, but Gwyneth ended up snagging the role and then even went on to win Best Actress at the Oscars for the role. It was a big victory for Gwen, but a gut punch for Winona. Then years later, when Winona was going through some rough times and she was busted for shoplifting, Gwen took a dig at her, writing in a newsletter saying, quote, Back in the day, I had a friend of me who was pretty hell-bent on taking me down. I restrained myself fighting back, I tried to take the high road, but one day I heard something unfortunate and humiliating that happened to this person, and my reaction was deep relief and happiness." End quote. They were so close but Hollywood just got the best of them and the toxicity of the industry took them down. Before we carry on talking about those celebrity friendships that crashed and burned, I just want to take a quick moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Taylor Swift and Kim K. Here's a case of on and off again frenemies that just got really messy. So back in 2016, there was some beef between Taylor Swift and Kimye. Basically, Taylor said that she was really upset about some lyrics that Kanye had included in one of his songs that he had released at the time. She told fans that she never heard those lyrics and that she never approved of them, but Kim sensed something a little fishy about Taylor. The singer and their Kardashian West had only just reconciled after the whole VMA debacle, but it seemed like their friendship wasn't built to last since Kim decided to expose Taylor for lying about the lyrics. Kim shared a video that she had secretly recorded of Kanye on the phone with Taylor sharing lyrics to his song, and when he involved her name in them, she said it was a compliment and that she approved, even calling him a friend for sharing. Kim doesn't always get involved in Kanye's drama, but when she does, she has receipts and you know she's gonna share them. On top of that, Taylor obviously made a song about their friend breakup and dished about the whole situation, so I guess in a way they both betrayed each other. At number 7, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie were the best of friends at one point, practically inseparable, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked, and by the Fire Nation, I mean Nicole. Nicole decided to allegedly expose Paris and play her adult film at one of her parties. Their friendship pretty much crashed and burned at that point, leaving the two of them at odds. While this incident was only speculation and rumors, and it was never confirmed by either party, this portrayal seems to be the reigning theory as to what happened between them and why they had such a big falling out, because they stopped speaking to each other and they were no longer seen in public together, and something serious had to have happened for these BFFs to have such a falling out. The only time Paris really spoke out about her breakup with her bestie was during an interview where she said, quote, it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends. Nicole knows what she did, and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. End quote. At number 6, Kim Cattrall and Sarah Jessica Parker. When Sex in the City was at its peak, everyone just pretty much assumed that the leading ladies were all best friends because they looked so close on TV. But we found out later that this was definitely 
not the case. After the third movie was taken off the table because of Cattrall's refusal to do the film, this is when the truth of the matter started to show. But the feud really came to a head after Cattrall's brother passed away and Sarah Jessica Parker wrote a message of condolence to her former colleague on social media. Cattrall was not having it and clapped back to Sarah Jessica Parker's message by writing, quote, Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Let me make this very clear. You are not my friend. So I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. End quote. This made it clear that there was a lot of built up tension between them. Cattrall has addressed the fight numerous times, saying that the mean girl culture of the show is really what destroyed it. In spot number seven is Damon Wayans. The actor and comedian came from a family of hilarious siblings who all made their mark in Hollywood. But in the 1980s, he was a struggling comedian and ended up taking a job at Saturday Night Live. They gave him a few lines, but he was aiming to be in the spotlight and wanted to be a standout performer. The creator of the show, Lauren Michaels, wouldn't give him the freedom that he wanted because he saw things differently. So during one of the sketches that was supposed to be between a straight man and a cop, Damon improvised unexpectedly and played a flamboyant gay man instead. He thought it would make the sketch more entertaining, but Lauren was not pleased and fired him after the episode. Rolling into number six is Leah Remini. The well-known actress made a name for herself on the TV series, The King of Queens, but her career went into more areas than just acting. She also was a host on The Talk. Throughout the years, people have seen different hosts come and go on the show with different stories and headlines about why they were replaced. One of these headlines came in 2012 when Leah was one of the people who got fired. Apparently the person to blame is Sharon Osbourne, who allegedly holds the power over the other hosts on the show. Leah said the two of them often butt heads on the show and that Sharon was just not a fan of hers. The feud between them ended up going to Twitter and Sharon wanted to clear her name and tweeted out that she had nothing to do with her getting fired. Later in 2015, Leah told Closer that Sharon thought her and her co-host Holly Robinson Pete were ghetto, I quote. Coincidentally, Holly was also fired not long after Leah was. So is that a coincidence? I think not. Halfway through number five is Jamie Wylett. The child star rose to fame with his role as Vincent Crabb in the iconic Harry Potter movie series. He appeared in the first six movies and played the friend of Draco Malfoy, who was a fan favorite. But then out of nowhere, he was missing from Deathly Hollows, and it didn't take long for people to notice and question why he was just no longer in the storyline. But in 2009, the news broke that he had been arrested for cannabis possession charges, so he was fired from the franchise. Obviously, during that time, it was not legal, so the arrest weighed a lot heavier on his record and career. It turns out he had 10 plants growing in his home and it wasn't his last arrest either. He was actually later arrested and put in jail during the 2012 London riots. We're moving on to number four and we got Aaron Hayes. The actress was starring on the TV series Kevin Can Wait, with Kevin James playing her husband. She played the comedian's wife for two years, which is why the audience was so shocked when her character had suddenly just died on the show and the actress was let go from the series. Like, can you just do that? You can just kill someone's wife off the show for no reason? The actress told reporters that she was fired from the show without any explanation. According to James himself, he said the show needed to kill her character off the show in order for it to drive forward. Aaron said she was hurt by the whole thing and began liking tweets from fans who said that they were gonna boycott the show following her departure. To make matters worse, they added someone in her place, not to be his wife, but to play a lead female in the series. Kevin James brought back his former TV wife, Leah Ramini, who starred with him on King of Queens. What a coincidence. Cruising into number three is Sylvester Stallone. The actor learned the hard way back in 1984 when he was fired from the action comedy movie Beverly Hills Cop. You may not have even known that he was involved in the project because if you watch the movie, it was actually Eddie Murphy as the lead. Turns out that he was the replacement for Stallone who was fired because he wanted to change the script. Apparently, he had some issues with the original script, saying that there was just too much comedy and not enough action. So he took matters into his own hands and actually rewrote the script to better fit his vision, but nobody wanted it and they let him go instead. 
Fun fact though, he says he actually used some of the ideas from his rewrite to make his 1986 film Cobra. And both movies made a lot of money, so really it was kind of a win-win for everyone. Earning number two on our list is Robert Downey Jr. The world adores him for taking on the iconic hero role of Iron Man, but he hasn't always had a clean record. Turns out he was once really struggling in his personal life to a point where he was fired from the set of the TV series Ally McBeal. The series ran from 1997 to 2002, and during that time, the actor was struggling with a severe drug addiction. During that timeline, he found himself in mugshots in courtrooms on multiple occasions. It wasn't until 2001 when he was arrested, once again, for suspicion of being under the influence of illegal substances. It was this arrest that had him kicked off the show. He was let go immediately and written off the show with no further plans to bring his character back. The producer of the show, David E. Kelly, made a statement following the arrests and said that the season would wrap without Downey Jr. in it. The producer at the time refused to give a reason for the actor's sudden departure, but Downey later opened up about it with the truth. We made it to number one, and we have the one and only Judy Garland. She's a legendary actress who holds the name of the original Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. She was shining the mid 20th century Hollywood image, but then became hooked on drugs and her personal and professional life started to spiral out of control. Over the following years after Oz, it was reported that she was fired from various MGM studio projects. Claims say that she would show up late on set or just not show up at all, so they would release her from her contract. Unfortunately, her story does not have a happy ending. She was never able to overcome her addictions and she actually died from an overdose at the age of 47. Starting off our list at number 10 is Drake and Kanye West. All right, so this feud has always been all over the place and it's pretty hard to keep track of. It started back in 2018 when they started taking shots at each other. The entire year was a whole bunch of drama involving secret children, alleged attacks, and betrayal. It all began in May when Pusha T took shots at Drake on day Tona, which was produced by Kanye. Drake responded with a diss track called Duppy Freestyle, which targeted both Pusha T and Kanye, and then it all just went downhill from there. Pusha released the story of a died in, which outed Drake's story of having a secret child, which was then later confirmed. Drake thought that Kanye told Pusha about his child, but Kanye tweeted out that he never spoke to anyone about it. After the clash a month later, Pusha came forward saying it wasn't Kanye, but was actually Drake's own producer who told him. In December, December 2018, a battle broke out on Twitter and it turned serious very quickly. Kanye tweeted, Drake called me to threaten me and Kim followed it by, at Drake, never threaten my husband or my family. He paved the way for there to be a Drake. Drake's only response was five laughing emojis on his Instagram story. Now, Kanye refuses to say his name in interviews and says that he is not allowed to mention him or any of his family members. So this is pretty serious because there were some pretty serious threats made. Up next to number nine is Bella Thorne and Maud Sun. They dated for over a year and even got married. Well, they had a fake wedding. They weren't legally married, but they did this whole romantic ceremony for Maud's birthday because that's what he wanted, which is super cute, right? Well, after the two of them split without any reason indicated, they started to battle it out on Twitter. They got into a heated exchange after Maude said that he was going to auction off Bella's stuff on eBay during his interview with 2Fab in May 2019. He said, I still have it and I figure if she doesn't get it soon, I'm going to have a really, really poppin' eBay site. He claims to have been joking around, but that didn't stop Bella from clapping back. She responded with on Twitter, Aw, looks like Maude really wants some press. Hashtag hungry. Also, so didn't you call the cops on me when I wanted my computer? And at that point, Maude shared his version of that story, saying that she went through his back door when he wasn't home and that he doesn't trust her, so that's why he called the cops. He also said that he's offered six times to meet and swap each other's stuff, but that she refuses. Honestly, it just sounds like a bunch of high school stuff to me. But months later, more tension came after Bella's ex, Tana Mojo, and Maude's son were spotted having dinner together. That was pretty much the final straw for Bella. To sum it all up, they are not on good terms. Swiping the number eight spot is Khloe Kardashian and Jordan Woods. Khloe was dating Tristan Thompson ever since 2016, and the pair seemed inseparable for a while. They both looked genuinely happy. I thought they were really cute. But throughout the relationship, there were on and off cheating scandals, all done on Tristan's behalf, keep in mind. One came at the worst possible timing when Chloe was actually going into labor with their baby. Fans got to watch the whole scandal go down on the reality TV show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Regardless of his unfaithfulness, Chloe stayed with him to work things out. But earlier this year, more cheating rumors started and Jordan Woods was at the front and center of it. Who's Jordan? 
oh, no one's significant, just Kylie Jenner's best friend who is basically a sister to Chloe. Turns out Jordan was spotted making out with Tristan after a night of partying. According to E, Jordan stayed at Tristan's house partying with him and his friends until the early hours of the morning, 7 a.m. to be exact, and they were very touchy feely all night, cuddling on the couch and stuff. The entire Kardashian family unfollowed Jordan on social media and completely cut her off. Every person involved has taken their side of the story to Twitter and media outlets, but Chloe remained silent and posted a picture of a quote that read, The worst pain is getting hurt by a person you explained your pain to. Jordan was living with Kylie at the time and ended up moving out of her house. Now this is all some very serious tea. In the number 7 spot is Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. Their feud has been a complicated one and one that lasted way longer than it should have if we're being honest. Back in 2009 they were actually good friends, seen together at award ceremonies, hanging out, laughing together. They even sang Katy's song Hot and Cold on stage together during Taylor's Fearless tour. Taylor dated John Mayer in 2009 and then a couple years later Katy began dating him in 2012. But things heated up when Taylor went on tour, the Red tour and hired three dancers who had danced for Katy Perry. A few months later, Katy was also going on tour and there are claims that Katy tried to get those dancers back for her prison tour, which would mean leaving Taylor's tour halfway through. And that's when the two of them had an even bigger falling out with each other on top of the whole dating my ex thing. Taylor spoke on it, telling the Rolling Stone magazine that they are straight up enemies and said, She did something so horrible. She basically tried to sabotage an entire arena tour. She tried to hire a bunch of people out from under me. In May 2018, Katie sent an olive branch to Taylor, like literally sent her an olive branch, and apologized with a note. They finally ended their feud this past year in 2019, and Katie posted a picture of a plate of cookies that said, peace at last, and captioned it, feels good, at Taylor Swift. Fans are pretty thrilled that this feud is finally over. At number six is the battle between Kendra Wilkinson and Holly Madison. The former playmates were once roommates, both living in the Playboy Mansion as one of Hugh Hefner's girlfriends. They were practically sisters in some weird way since they were dating the same man under the same roof at the same time. But that all came to an end when both girls decided to move out of the mansion back in 2008. They had their own personal tension between each other, but a feud officially began when Holly wrote a memoir about her experience in the Playboy Mansion called Down the Rabbit Hole. In the book, she revisits what she calls disturbing memories and portrays herself as a victim of Hugh's manipulation. But Kendra thought her book was, I quote, disgusting, and says that although she is embarrassed of her own past lifestyle, she would never blame Hefner for it. Kendra openly tweeted at Holly her thoughts and told Fox 5, We dated an 80 year old man at the same time. It's very awkward. She probably wants to distance herself from the situation. God bless her, she should. It's embarrassing because because I saw some things that she probably doesn't want me to talk about. Holly responded by calling her the fakest person she'd ever met. But Hugh's statement is really the one that matters. In response to Holly's book, he said, I quote, Over the course of my life, I've had more than my fair share of romantic relationships with wonderful women. Many moved on to live happy, healthy, and productive lives, and I'm pleased to say remain dear friends today. Sadly, there are a few who have chosen to rewrite history in an attempt to stay in the spotlight. Have we do list at number Five is Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. The Sex and the City co-stars were once working together on set every day. And ever since the early days of the show, there were rumors going around about the fighting between the two of them. There were claims about a feud happening based on Sarah receiving a higher salary than Kim. Back in 2004, Kim admitted money was a part of the reason that the show ended. She said, I felt after six years it was time for all of us to participate in the financial windfall of Sex and the City. When they didn't seem keen on that, I thought it was time to move on. Later on in 2017, Daily Mail reported that the third Sex and the City movie was cancelled due to the demands by Kim. They stated, Warner Brothers refused to meet her demands and had to cancel production as the company decided it wouldn't be fair to fans to produce a movie with only three of the four main characters. Kim responded by saying the only demand she made was that she didn't want to do the movie, which apparently she turned down back in 2016. In October 2017, Kim did an interview with Piers Morgan and said that her and her other co-stars have never been friends and are just colleagues. But she targeted Sarah specifically and said, I think she could have been nicer. I really think she could have been nicer. I don't know what her issue is. Specifically, Sarah Jessica Parker is that I think she could have been nicer. I really think she could have been nicer. Since then, it has been a bunch of back and forth during press interviews, and it doesn't look like they will be eye to eye on things anytime soon. 
Here we are at number four with Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan. An over dramatic and totally unnecessary cat fight, let's be honest, but a legendary one because it is still going on. They were once really good friends and have one of the most famous paparazzi pictures of all times where they were out on the town in LA with Britney Spears. Paris went on to make claims that Lindsay actually party crashed that night and wasn't invited, and that Paris was just out with Britney for the night. For years, they've always had this ongoing distaste for one another, and we never really understood why. But more recently, their feud continued. Continued after Paris was on Watch What Happens Live and was asked to say three nice things about Lindsay. She replied with, She's beyond lame. And embarrassing. Lindsay's representative responded by saying, Obviously, Paris needs to feel relevant and is desperate for attention. But Lindsay did respond herself and posted a throwback picture to Instagram after Paris released her new song and video called Best Friends Ass. She posted the throwback picture of the two of them and captioned it hashtag Beyond Friends Are True. Love at Paris Hilton. Congratulations on your new song. It definitely stirred the pot and she later deleted the post. All right, guys, at number three is Lady Gaga and Kelly Osbourne. The war started between them back in 2009 when Osborne called Gaga a butterface on her show Fashion Police. Of course, Gaga fans jumped to her defense and began harassing Kelly with some pretty evil threats and comments about her body image. Gaga responded with an open letter telling her that her show criticizes and rates people's beauty, which is wrong. However, Sharon Osborne was not okay with her daughter being slammed on social media, so she wrote an open letter to Gaga and called her a bully since she has millions of followers and didn't do any of this privately. The feud was going on for a while until 2013 when Gaga tried to make a peace offering. The singer made an appearance in October on the X Factor UK where she gave Sharon, who was a judge, a cake to celebrate her daughter's birthday. Kelly was actually turning 29 and it just so happened to fall on that day. Sharon and Gaga even took a smiling picture together with the cake, but Kelly did not accept it and wrote on Twitter, not to be ungrateful, but why would you send me a birthday cake via my mother in a country half the world away. She then posted a picture of the cake to her Instagram with the hashtags eat my and hypocrisy. But Gaga ended the feud and responded with kindness, tweeting out, I didn't know it was your birthday until this afternoon, meant as a peace offering, happy birthday. Coming in the number two spot is Justin Bieber and Orlando Bloom. How could we ever forget the time Orlando punched Justin in the face and it was all caught on tape. The altercation took place in a restaurant in Ibiza when the two of them just so happened to run into each other. In the footage, you can see them approach each other and Justin gets all tough, yelling, what's up? And then bam, Orlando throws the first swing. The reason they were ever feuding was because Justin was getting a little too close with Orlando's wife at the time, Victoria's Secret model Miranda Kerr. It was reported they were exchanging in some pretty flirty texts with each other and photos surfaced of them getting cozy after the 2012 Victoria's Secret fashion show. She always denied the allegations and said they were just friends. Classic excuse. But that did not stop Orlando from feeling some type of way about Biebs. People were quick to break up the fight and the crowd even started clapping as Justin was escorted out. After leaving the restaurant, Justin wanted to get in another hit, so he posted a picture to his Instagram of Miranda in a sexy bikini. After some expected backlash, he then deleted the post. Taking the number one spot is Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. The two rappers have never been close pals in the past and their beef with each other has blown to epic proportions. The two of them have collaborated before with their music and have even been supportive of one another in the past, but something else seemed to be going on behind the scenes because Cardi B posted videos on Instagram claiming a variety of different things about Nicki. Rumors said this started after Nicki liked a negative comment on one of Cardi's freestyle rap videos where a user said, dumbass bars. There was tension between the pair which all exploded later on in September 2018 at the New York Fashion Week. The story goes that Cardi approached Nicki and confronted her about the lies she was spreading and claims that a security guard of hers elbowed her in the head before being escorted out of the room with just one shoe on. Cardi literally took off one of her heels and threw it at Nikki's head. After the altercation, Nikki spoke about it on her show Queen Radio and said that her friend, Ra Ali, was the person who hit Cardi and that she punched her eight to nine times. It then caused a whole legal dispute because Nikki was saying that she is footage and was going to press charges, but apparently was also offering $100,000 to anyone who had the footage. It ended on decent terms with both of them tweeting that they will not be discussing anything anymore. It is almost the one year anniversary since the whole shoe throwing fight, so I guess we'll have to wait and see if this really is the end or not. At number 10, The Weeknd and The Grammys. The Grammys are one of the most prestigious awards in the music industry. Pretty much every artist dreams of one day receiving one, and they probably don't want to put their chances of receiving one in jeopardy. One artist, however, isn't interested in being on the Grammys' good side and would rather fight them than be friends. Singer The Weeknd announced that he would be boycotting the Grammys for the foreseeable future due to the unfairness of the awards. 
It's alleged that there are secret committees within the Academy who decide who gets nominated and who wins awards, and this has been the subject of a feud between The Weeknd and the Grammys. These allegations stem from the revelations made by former chief executive Deborah Duggan, who filed a 44-page complaint about the Grammys where she cited, quote, The Grammys voting process is ripe with corruption. Members of the board of trustees and the secret committees choose artists with whom they have personal or business relationships, end quote. After his 2020 song Blinding Lights was snubbed of any nominations, The Weeknd blamed the alleged corruption for his snub, and he and the Academy have been in a war of words, so to speak, ever since. Other than the allegations of corruption within the Academy, The Weeknd also alleges that he was locked out of Grammy nominations because he decided to perform at the Super Bowl. Because of this music conspiracy, the singer released a statement in March of this year that read, quote, Because of the secret committees, I will no longer allow my label to submit my music to the Grammys. End quote. At number 9, James Charles and Asian Doll. It's a little embarrassing for celebrities to get dragged online for something as petty as a Twitter feud. Like imagine trying to clap back at someone just for them to clap back even harder, leaving the internet laughing at you. This is pretty much what happened between James Charles and rapper Asian Doll. It all started when the rapper tweeted out about makeup artist prices where she said, quote, if you charge over $150 to do a face of makeup, then you can go to hell respectively. James saw this tweet and it frustrated him a bit to the point where he felt the need to respond, saying, quote, What a stupid tweet. One foundation can cost $50. Artists have to buy every shade for their kit, and that's just the first step. It's expensive to work as a makeup artist. Either pay an artist's rate for their time and skill, or do it yourself, or get it done at a counter and risk looking busted. End quote. Asian Doll saw his reply and basically clapped back with a nobody asked you sort of message, where she basically made a dig at his flashback Mary look. The rapper tweeted saying, quote, What a dumbass to be in my business replying to something that has absolutely nothing to do with you. I'm having a debate about hood prices, baby. Stay over there in Hollywood where they have you looking like a ghost. End quote. This little Twitter feud had fans laughing and memeing the whole situation and criticized James for even jumping into the conversation in the first place. Now before carrying on with the list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far and also check out my gaming channel Viper Girl and hit that subscribe button while you're there. At number 8, Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton. After their bombshell Oprah interview, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been scrutinized for a lot of what they spoke about. One of the biggest things people are talking about in regards to their interview is their relationship with the rest of their family. According to sources, the most strained relationships are those between Meghan Markle and Kate Milton, as well as Prince Harry and his brother William. Meghan and Kate have reportedly been on poor terms for a long time, with some sources saying that they haven't spoken to each other in over a year. During the interview, Meghan addressed the public's view on her feud with Kate over Princess Charlotte's dress at Meghan Meghan's wedding, saying that Kate made her cry over it. Though they eventually patched things up and Kate apologized, they haven't been on speaking terms, not because of anything personal, but because of the feud between their husbands. There doesn't seem to be a lot of hate between Meg and Kate, but there seems to be a lot of tension since their partners aren't on good terms with each other. A source explained Meghan and Kate's situation in a statement saying, quote, There is real animosity that the brothers have towards one another, and that has spilled over to Meghan and Kate's relationship, making it very hard for them to be friends or even friendly, end quote. Hopefully they can one day patch things up for the sake of being rid of this negative energy. At number 7, Addison Rae and Bryce Hall. Two of TikTok's biggest stars and former power couple Addison Rae and Bryce Hall have been feuding with each other ever since their messy breakup just a few weeks ago. In March of this year, there were reports that the couple had split up for the second time after their relationship was bombarded with cheating rumors and scandals. These rumors first came about during a Zoom call with some of her fans where Addison revealed that she and Bryce had been fighting and so these rumors got off the ground and started circulating. Shortly after that, Addison made a cryptic Instagram post about how she wanted to keep some of the things she's dealing with away from the public eye. There was some speculation that this had something to do with Bryce, and this theory was embraced by more followers as they started to notice that some of Bryce and Addison's couple pictures had been removed from social media. Later, their breakup was finally addressed with a simple confirmation of their split. We don't know why they broke up or if the cheating rumors are true, but they are on and off again, so their feuding and fighting may only last a short amount of time. But we shall see. At number 6, Tana Mojo and Cole Kerrigan. Influencers Tana Mojo and Cole Kerrigan have been caught in a feud after Cole alleged that Tana hacked his social media accounts and tried to sue him for $100,000. It all started when Cole put Tana on blast by sharing a screenshot of a cease and desist text allegedly sent by Tana's lawyer. 
The text essentially warned Cole that he was in violation of a contract he had signed with Tana and that a breach of contract would subject him to pay $100,000. The contract is alleged that Tana has her circle of friends sign a non-disclosure agreement each year and so now Cole is in trouble after one of his social media posts violated the terms of said contract. Now on top of this lawsuit, Cole also claims that Tana hired someone to hack his social media accounts where they were able to delete a number of accounts like his YouTube channel and Twitter account. Cole claims that all of this drama is because he is one of the only people that Tana knows who isn't afraid to speak out about her. Cole has also claimed that Tana has kicked him out of her house, used him for free makeup services, and would even go through his personal belongings when he wasn't home. There haven't been many updates on this feud, but I'm sure that this is far from over. At number 5, Bad Baby and Dr. Phil If you're a fan of the show Dr. Phil, then you may be familiar with Danielle Rigoli, aka the Cash Me Outside Girl. Danielle, now known as rapper Bad Baby, was on the show because her mother was struggling to help her with her behavioral issues. As a result of her time on the show, Dr. Phil referred Danielle to a reform camp of sorts called Turnabout Ranch. The ranch is supposed to be a teen residential facility where they rehabilitate troubled teens. Well, recently, Danielle came out to talk about her experiences at the ranch, recounting the abuse that she endured there and calling Dr. Phil out on recommending such a horrific place. The rapper claimed that she was apprehended by workers in the middle of the night, taken from her home and transported to the ranch where she was forced to stay awake for three days. She also spoke out about the facility's use of restraints on teens in attendance and how many other attendees cited many instances of abuse while at the ranch. Danielle spoke out about her experiences in her YouTube video and she spoke directly to Dr. Phil condemning his support for such a place and warned him that if he doesn't take accountability that she would quote, handle things her way. As of right now, Dr. Phil has yet to comment on the situation but I'm sure that Danielle is planning her fight for justice. At number 4, Sabrina Carpenter and Olivia Rodrigo One of the hottest songs out there right now is Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo and though it is seen as the breakup anthem of 2021, it's also got a huge backstory and a huge feud surrounding it. Essentially, Olivia wrote Driver's License after her breakup with her high school musical, the musical of the series, co-star Joshua Bassett. Apparently, this was a very messy breakup that turned into a very messy love triangle after actress Sabrina Carpenter was brought into the mix and started dating Joshua. Are you following? Okay, so Olivia releases a song with a few nods to Joshua's new relationship with Sabrina. Next, in response to Olivia's song, Joshua releases a few songs of his own, including one called Lie Lie Lie. And then, Sabrina released a song of her own that included references to Olivia as the song was about getting into a new relationship while an ex watches on. Now, no one is saying anything directly and it is a very read between the lines kind of situation, but it's still very messy and fans are obsessed. It could all be for PR or maybe not, but it is certainly a very juicy story. At number 3, Prince Harry and Prince William One of the biggest feuds on this list is one that I briefly mentioned before. Prince Harry and Prince William have been feuding for years, but with his exit from the royal family as well as his bombshell interview with Oprah, things may have gotten even more tense. The brothers have always had a strained relationship even when growing up. It is said that William adopted a more serious attitude, being the one destined for the throne, and Harry was more laid back and carefree. These two personalities apparently clashed a lot growing up and remains difficult to this day. Now with the added strain on the family following Harry and Meghan's interview, William is reportedly furious with his brother. According to sources, William is struggling to hold back his side of the story as the Queen has said that they would be handling the situation privately. Sources say that William is looking to defend his wife Kate as well as clear up any rumors surrounding racial allegations within the family. Harry and William haven't spoken in a long time according to sources and I don't really think they will be anytime soon. At number 2, Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood After becoming friends on The View, Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood are now feuding with each other after they got into a very heated argument surrounding Piers Morgan's remarks about Meghan Markle. Sharon backed up Piers' comments about Meghan Markle's mental health and this frustrated Cheryl. The two got into a very heated debate that ended with Sharon in tears, but this also sparked a conversation about Sharon's ideals. She was called a racist and a number of other accusations came out about how she has used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts. As a result of this, Sharon was fired from the show and an internal investigation was launched. Cheryl said that she and Sharon were good friends, but because of this feud, they haven't spoken to each other. Sharon said that she tried sending Cheryl a apology text, but it went unanswered. We don't know if they'll make up, but it might be too soon to tell. And finally, at number one, Conor McGregor and Jake Paul. Now I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because there is just so much pettiness and I can't handle it. 
Basically, there is a one-sided feud between Conor McGregor and Jake Paul. Jake wants to fight Conor, and Conor's like, meh. Jake has been seen all over social media antagonizing, posting videos, and calling him names, and even bribing the guy with a $50 million check. Really, it's very childish, playground-type drama that no one besides Jake really has the time for. After all his antagonizing, nothing really ever came of it. Connor hasn't fought Jake and probably never will because of how annoying he is. In at number 10, Tana Mojo. Anyone who's a fan of Tana Mojo probably knows who her ex-manager, Jordan Warona, is. Jordan was not only her manager, he was a main part of her brand and content, and he was so close to the YouTuber that she considered him to be like a second father. But things took a turn when he starred alongside her in the MTV reality show, Tana Uncensored. During the second season of the show, Tana was constantly fighting with her manager. There was even an entire episode of the show where Tana decided to launch perfume on the same day as her friend's nose surgery against the advice of her manager, Jordan. She ended up missing both events, leaving her manager scrambling to figure out if they were going to launch that day or not. The entire show made her look like an unprofessional brat, and her own fans turned on her because of how she was treating her manager. At that time, the pair reconciled, but in the years that followed, Tana cut ties with Jordan and now has a new manager. In at number nine, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is famously managed by Scooter Braun, who has become the it guy in Hollywood for managing talent. Braun started managing Justin when he was only a preteen, so Scooter has grown up as a father figure to Justin. Scooter has opened up on a few occasions about Justin's dark past and has exposed how close to death that Justin actually was during his substance struggles. During one interview, Scooter said, quote, I thought he was going to go to sleep one night and that he would have so much crap in his system that he would not wake up the next morning. Apparently, Braun's manipulation of Justin is what might have saved him, telling BuzzFeed News in April of 2019, quote, Justin, when he got healthy, he was like, man, there were times where you were manipulating me that made me really upset. But now I realize you were only doing it to help me. And at number eight, Amber Heard. Kate James was a close friend and assistant to Amber Heard while she was going through her messy divorce from Johnny Depp. At first, James supported Amber's claims and helped Heard's case against Depp. But when it came to the trial, James completely changed her story and revealed the truth about their relationship. She exposed that Amber Heard was the one that was toxic and harmful to Depp and exposed multiple examples of this during her time working for Heard from 2012 to 2015. She even exposed that Heard would talk trash behind Johnny's back. For example, once she said that she was dating an old man. Kate really exposed Amber for who she was behind the scenes, being that she spent so much time together. She didn't hold back, especially after being betrayed by her when Amber retold an intimate story from Kate's personal life, then pawned it off as it was her own to gain sympathy. In at number seven, the Kardashians. Kim Kardashian and Larsa Pippen were close friends for over a decade until the Kardashian sisters suddenly unfollowed Larsa on Instagram, leaving everyone wondering what happened. Larsa dished about the situation during an interview on the Hollywood Raw podcast. She spoke out saying that she and Kim have a very different relationship now and exposed some of the family drama that she's been a part of. Larsa said that Kanye had been a huge part of why she and Kim were no longer friends, saying that he brainwashed the family into turning against her after she tried establishing boundaries in their friendship, and also exposed Khloe Kardashian for allegedly stealing Tristan away from her, with Larsa saying that she was seeing Tristan before he and Khloe got together. Apparently, she's the person that introduced them in the first place. For now, the Kardashians have separated themselves from Larsa, and it's probably gonna stay that way. And at number six, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie were the best of friends at one point, practically inseparable. They also starred on hit reality show The Simple Life together. But that all changed when it was alleged that Nicole played Paris's leaked adult tape at one of her parties for all of the guests to see. Obviously, there's no coming back from a move like that, and they were enemies in the years that followed. While this incident was never confirmed by either party, this betrayal seems to be the reigning theory as to what happened between them and why they had such a big falling out. The only time Paris really spoke about their falling out was during an interview where she said, quote, it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends. Nicole knows what she did, and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. Based on that, it kind of seems like the rumors are true. Moving on to number four is Bella Thorne and Tana Mojo. The two of them dated for a long time, but things were a little confusing from the outside looking in. During the relationship, Bella was also in a committed relationship to Maud's son, but they were all okay with the fact that she was dating two people, very openly. But Bella ended up splitting from both of them, and then pictures surfaced of Tana and Maud's son out having dinner. They were not being romantic with each other in the photos, but it was enough to set Bella off on Twitter. She tweeted, 
Hannah and I are no longer good. She broke a girl code. I'm over it. She even went on to make claims that Tana was dating her in the first place for Twitter, basically for clout. Tana responded to her saying she has no idea why she's mad and that her claims are super hurtful. Honestly, it was pretty wild to see them having a fight on Twitter because fans were chiming in as each tweet was being sent. Like they were waiting, like who's gonna answer next? What's gonna happen? Guys, just text each other. All right, guys, so number three is Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun. Scooter is one of the biggest record executives in the music industry and owns Big Machine Label Group. He works with tons of big artists like Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. But in 2019, Taylor exposed him for allegedly bullying her and using her music against her. She said that he acquired her entire music catalog from her first six albums after he purchased the label group for $300 million on June 30th and was using that to his advantage. She posted an open letter to him revealing that he has all rights to her old music and she is not able to purchase them back. She wrote, Scooter has stripped me of my life's work that I wasn't given an opportunity to buy. My musical legacy is about to lie in the hands of someone who tried to dismantle it. This is my worst case scenario. Taylor shared the post with her fans on social media, explaining why she wasn't allowed to perform any of her old songs at the AMAs. At that point, other celebrities got involved, some of them defending Scooter because like they are his artists, but Taylor's fans stuck by her side. In spot number two is Prince William and Prince Harry. They have been having a royal rift for many years now and a lot of people are confused by the whole thing. But they are human and it is normal for siblings to fight. Apparently the feud started between them when Prince William said words about Harry's wife, Meghan Markle. It started back in 2016 when Harry met Meghan and finally introduced her into his family. William was not as supportive of it as other members in the family were and referred to Meghan as this girl. From there, Meghan was a huge topic and argument between them but also the family as a Whole. Some people felt she came with too much baggage or maybe was untrustworthy and that they needed to keep guard of it as she entered into the royal position. But Harry and Meghan have decided to leave the royal family and the brothers say they are working on the relationship. So. Let's hope they can figure it out. We have made it to number one and we have Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. This one is a more one-sided feud, but it is taking the world by storm right now. Kanye recently announced he would be running for president, but started acting erratic during the presidential campaign rally. He ended up having a meltdown where he started crying and saying that he almost killed one of his own children through an abortion. The whole thing was filmed and it went viral immediately. Not long after that, he went on Twitter and slammed his wife Kim Kardashian, saying that she and her family are are white supremacists who tried to have him locked up with medical care. He was making a bunch of random claims, saying that he was trying to divorce Kim for a while and also accused her of having an affair with Meek Mill. But it is clear that he is struggling right now with mental issues and has been seeking help for them. He deleted the tweets a few days later and also apologized to Kim on Twitter. The most recent update though is photos recently surfaced of them talking in the car together and Kim was just in full out tears. So it seems that it was a very emotional talk. All right, guys, that's our part three list. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know what you're thinking down in those comments. Let me know who would win that cage fight out of curiosity's sake.